Hello, my name is Dr. George Pachaki, and welcome to uh, an HR perspective on separating and retaining employees. This section will be what could be referred to as section 10 or chapter 10. You are basically taking me on an online class, a face to face class, or in one of my workshops. So let's go over uh, separating and retaining employees. Remember, anything in this series that you're doing with me, you have to start thinking as an HR manager or even as a manager uh, uh, with an HR, HR outlook. Because uh, it costs me money. You know, we're going to uh, uh, review uh, what we'll be talking about. We're going to talk about management uh, turnover, like very costly to management, you know, because they have to turn over employees, means they have to retrain them, they have to learn the system. A lot of times they have to equip them with uniforms, name tags, office. Uh, it, it's a process that gets costly. It should be a one time uh, event, maybe every three, four years. You know, legal separation, how do I legally separate them? Uh, employee separation, why do employees leave? You know, some leave just because uh, they don't want to work, they got another job, better opportunity. But I'm trying to look at um, uh, how do I uh, re retain them. Sometimes they leave because of a progressive discipline. They've reached that max where there's no longer uh, any more chances. They've used them up in some uh, companies. It may be one or two and you're out. So uh, Many companies give you several uh, advantages to change your behavior. Remember, as an HR or as an organization, mine is not to eliminate, get rid of workers that are that I need for my process. Mine is basically to uh, help them and develop them and help them to see the benefit of working for our organization. You know, it does pay for their uh, uh, livelihood and it, uh, it helps them also learn and grow within the organization. All right, so let's go with the, a series. I want to keep this under 20 minutes. Uh, okay, let's go in an overview. I want to make this just a little bit bigger. Those of you who are taking me uh, online or a hybrid class or in my workshops, you already uh, have been supplied with my uh, conceptual maps or mind maps, so you could uh, uh, follow along. But remember, uh, even after we talk the material, you utilize these maps or as a trigger to help you remember. You see it, oh yeah, now I remember. I remember what Dr. George said, or I remember what somebody else said in some of our forums. Okay, let's, uh, let's get a chapter overview here. You have involuntary turnover. You have voluntary turnover. You know, involuntary turnover, they don't want to leave, but I'm turning them over. You have voluntary turnover because they're leaving on their own uh, behalf. They have, to, uh, you know, uh, something happened in their life that, uh, you know, either one of the spouses moved or, uh, they got a better opportunity or or uh, health issues, whatever, but they're moving. And it, and it can be moving, it can be promoted. So there's uh, some turnover within a company and some turnover within a department within the organization. You know, what effects it has on an organization or department, identify legal requirements for employee discipline, whether you're with a union or without a non-union. Part of the whole thing we've been discussing that we should, even if I'm not union, company. A lot of companies aren't non-union. Uh, you know, uh, I come from a union. Uh, I'm in a union now. So it, it depends on the organization. It depends on the structure. It depends on the climate. It depends on the environment, whether I belong to a union or I'm not union. If I uh, live in Chicago, Chicago is a very uh, union uh, type of a city out in the suburbs that, uh, you know, is spotty. Some areas want unions, some don't. Uh, it's irrelevant. Okay, so, but what are the legal uh, requirements? So if I don't have a union, representation for any kind of collective body, body, does that mean I shouldn't have a grievance policy or procedure if somebody did something? So I just don't say the minute, you know, even though we're at a, 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 a right to work state, that means I could fire you at any time and you can leave any time you want without any kind of excuse, but that doesn't work too well because if I fire you and the person thinks, well, even though they were inefficient and ineffective employees, they may come back and say, George, it's a grim story, you don't like any Polish people, you don't like any African Americans, you don't like any Hispanic, whatever the issue is. So it's easier to make sure you have a policy, the employees understand the policy, this is part of the whole HR perspective, they know what the next step is if they made an infraction, is this a major infraction or this is a minor infraction? A major infraction, you know, I threaten somebody with a gun or I steal, that's automatic dismissal. You can't, if you can't trust the individual and uh, safety of other individuals, then they have to be terminated. And most courts will uh, uh, look at uh, 
when they're looking at it, they will look at it that you're doing the best you can to protect the overall uh, uh, base of your employees, okay? And how organizations contribute to employee satisfaction. Remember, my policies, what they do to work, the work assignments, the management, the environment, uh, everything I provide to them has everything to do with employee's job satisfaction. If an employee is satisfied at work, he's satisfied, then he basically is a, has a good attitude, he's happy, he's content, paying him fairly, he or she will basically uh, uh, transfer that satisfaction and that uh, goodwill, hopefully, to your customers and your clients, whether they're internal organization or external organization. That's basically uh, the overview of uh, why we should uh, retain. Some employees I have to let go, remember? Depends on their, uh, on their uh, effectiveness, efficiency, or the social behavior. Managing turnover. When we talk about exit uh, interviews, if I'm firing someone, I'm not giving them an exit interview. I'm firing you, I know why you're, I'm, I'm uh, letting you go, uh, okay? But let's say if uh, uh, everything's working well, and the exit interview I utilize, for, I also uh, uh, notice that a large number, or what I do at the exit interviews is to give me a heads up before the numbers get larger. But I, all of a sudden, a good engineer, a good salesperson, or a good employee, or a good uh, customer service rep, or a manager, or whatever, is leaving, not for promotion, I can see for promotion, but leaving the organization totally. Why are you leaving? Because I want to retain that individual. They may say uh, your hours aren't flexible enough, or I like to travel, or your pay is, is not competitive, or uh, the working conditions are uh, too harsh, or your technology is not there. I'm trying to advance my own, uh, 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 what do you call it, my own uh, understanding of companies or, and, uh, and develop my own discipline. So all those, that information, they're leaving, they're very open. Did you share that? Now if I start seeing as an HR that there's a pattern creating with this, that's when I have to act as, okay, what's going on? Maybe I should change my policies. Maybe I should do some training for uh, uh, or developmental uh, uh, action plans for my manager, whatever it is. You know, and reasons for quitting. There's a lot of reasons. You know, I don't like my boss. Uh, I wasn't a fit with the company culture. You know, that's, that's an issue. I do a lot of assessments. Maybe I should look at the assessments how I bring new employees in, better pay someplace else, more interesting work. I could combine two jobs. You know, I may, we may have to do a job uh, uh, or a review or an organizational uh, review. You know, I was fired or laid off and others. Now, these are some reasons for quitting. Involuntary, you know, often employees uh, who would prefer to stay recruiting selection. You know, a lot of people are on social media or linking in, and there's other com uh, individuals in that media looking, hey, I like George. I think I'm going to hire him. Let me make contact with him. So they may be always offering. If you're a good employee, there's always out there. So you want to fester and create that loyalty to the organization, other than the pay, you know what I mean? Lost productivity, uh, lawsuits, and uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, workplace violence. These are involuntary, you know, I'm, I'm getting rid of them, you know what I mean? Okay, voluntary turnover, uh, uh, recruiting selection, training, and a process. So there's kind of, uh, uh, I think, I, uh, let me flip on here, my uh, concepts maps, I had these a little bit, no, I got it right. All right, so I was just looking at the two together. We're doing fine. Involuntary is basically I'm left because um, uh, we didn't make a fit. Uh, uh, voluntary is often because uh, uh, organization prefer to keep them, but something else happened at the time, a replacement, they couldn't afford the individual. Okay. Let's see, employee separation. What should we know? Organizations. When I separate, develop a standardized way of letting employees go. You know, it's very disheartening to other employees. Uh, uh, some employees, if they are letting go, when they have a massive downsizing, right-sizing, you normally as a middle manager don't know you're being let go to uh, go into the HR office or somebody comes and says, hey, I'm going to talk to you because they'll cut off your computers or your privileges because you have uh, information that's very, uh, or you could download or do more damage to systems to, uh, to the intranet within the organization or take files or do something else with uh, clients' uh, information if you become a disgruntled employee. But Saying all that, you still have a process. You could, when a person comes in, then say, hey, would you come here and talk to us? You will we'll keep you on the payroll for the next three or four weeks until you've settled and understand what's going on and work with some outsourcing uh, organization to help them. But it has to be a systematic approach that it's uh, done to everyone at all levels. 
maybe a little bit different depending on the responsibility and accessibility you have to critical company information. This way, if you're doing it to everyone, you have a process, everyone knows what the process is, and it keeps you from some kind of legal uh, action against that. Managers, uh, 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 not to be left solely uh, to the discretion, right, to how I, uh, if I'm ready to fire someone, I'm ready to let them go, I do deal with HR. HR is making sure, hey, is this, could we maybe move this person? Is this person being let go for a valid reason? Normally, by that time, HR is very involved with the process. I'm talking more small and medium uh, companies. Uh, the managers can't fire and then later on tell HR. That is a policy. Uh, be, uh, based on principles of justice and laws, uh, should allow for various ways to intervene. So different policy separations that there is some uh, recourse for the individual. There is some uh, buffer for the management. There is some protection for the employees that are left. And there is some kind of a development and, and, or a structure to help those who are left to understand in what information you say why this person left. Did he leave voluntary or involuntary? Do you say, oh, George, uh, had better opportunities uh, someplace else? And okay, so we, we, we'll take care of that. The next one I'm going to look at is legal requirements. The law generally basically gives employees a wide latitude in hiring and firing but employers must meet certain requirements avoid wrongful discharge make sure there's a that's if you have a grievance po uh, policy and then they went through the different steps it's it's more in favor of the organization that means you know, i'm trying to keep the employee not trying to fire the employee I'm trying to motivate the employee and try to uh, help develop them avoid illegal discrimination meet standards related to employer employees privacy after i fired them if so, uh, if someone says hey uh, George used to work for this organization. Would you uh, can you give me some uh, information? All I could tell him is yeah, he worked here. Here's his title, and George decided uh, to leave. No longer uh, works here. He turned in his uh, resignation, for lack of a better word. And the resignation could be involuntary or voluntary. All right. And a lot of times when I'm uh, uh, letting, a, if I'm firing an individual, a lot of organizations will give the individual the opportunity to. Uh, resign instead of being fired. This way they get the benefits and it's easier when I'm responding, it's easier when they write on the on their resume. I'm not trying to uh, take care of their livelihoods. They just didn't mesh with the organization. They weren't performers. Maybe it was uh, too much of responsibility, too uh, hard of a task, didn't have the abilities. So uh, you don't want to stifle the individual for going forward. So you give them that, uh, that information. You know, that's what I give them that option. Plus, on the flip side, it also helps me uh, against any kind of lawsuits because the individual left on, on their own, okay? Uh, wrongful discharge, implied agreement may not be violated. You remember, as long as I've got a contract or a lot of salary workers, I've done the task, you can't just fire me. Uh, you can, but a lot of times I, I'll take it to court. It's not worth the uh, hassle. A lot of times they uh, pay me out, pay out my contract. Uh, uh, you know, if I have a contract for one or two years, they may say, okay, George, we don't need your service. And a lot of times they do it at executives. When they come in and someone did not mesh with uh, the workforce, they say, okay, we no longer leave your services, but we owe you this contractual agreement. You know, you call it a, a golden parachute, but they'll pay them out the full amount of the contract. And that's just because if you take them to court and drag it out, bad name publicity, it's easier to pay the, the amount for the cost of the legal fees, the PR, and whatever is going on, it, 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 a lot of time is uh, still to advantage of the organization to pay out. Uh, and plus the employee doesn't have a bad taste in he or she is not get a bad amount in your organization. You know, and discrimination, make sure without regard, remember you can't, let me just slide this over here a little bit. Illegal requirements. You can't let anyone go because of age, race, and sex, or other protected uh, status. You know, different sexual uh, sexual orientation. Uh, just to throw one and on there. Even-handed, carefully document discipline, and avoid such claims. Make sure you have a paper trail, and you know, and it doesn't have to be a long paper trail. It dates uh, the critical information. Protect employees' uh, privacy, and by a lot of laws, you have uh, you know the workman's adjustment retraining notification. And employers uh, covered by the law are required to give notice before any closing layoff. Not even though, let's say, if you're a small company, you may not be covered by the requirements because you're not large enough. It still is good uh, uh, business and good ethical values and social responsibility. Say, hey, we're not making it. Uh, I might have to close the business in a couple of uh, uh, months, or uh, because of my health or something else. You know, uh, I'm trying to find a buyer just so that you keep the employees uh, in the loop. You don't want to let them come one day and they're closed out. It makes it hard. Employees, they could be looking for other work or, or 
or something else since you're already uh, going to be shutting down the operation. Progressive discipline. You know, if I look at the hot stove, should be like a hot stove. Objective, clear warning, consistent, and immediate consequences. You should have a policy. If you do this, boom, 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 you know, your, your blue rules and your red rules. Red rules will be hot. No uh, discrimination, no sexual harassment, no violence. But, you know, you're, you're a little late here, you're late there. Those may be rules and policies. You get different types of uh, punishment, not as severe as some of the red uh, rules that should not be violated. And when I look at progressive, you should have some kind of step, you know, formal process. And that is a lot of a process of your small business and online, you know, uh, some of the sites, uh, you know, hr.org uh, will give, uh, hrm.org uh, will give you information on um, different policies, little templates. Uh, a lot of the colleges have that information. The Small Business Administration, you go on there, you'll be able to pull up some of that. Labor and Relations uh, uh, sites will give you also what should be a uh, unofficial policy. Nothing complicated, very simplistic. Uh, you know, unofficial warning, you did something wrong, you give them a verbal warning, official warning, now you write something, creating a paper trail. Second warning, you'll threat to temporary suspension, and then basically a temporary suspension that keeps that up, then you finally let the person go. Example, tardiness, absenteeism, unsafe work practices, poor quality of work, sexual harassment of uh, uh, co-workers coming to work impaired or by drugs or alcohol, theft or company property, and this one is cyber uh, slacking. Okay? Now, when I looked at alternative uh, 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 dispute resolution, definition, bringing in a partial outsider, it could be a, a, a budsman, it could be a, a mediator, uh, uh, not an arbitrator. Arbitrator does a ruling, but that could be that could be something you could do something like that to bring somebody else in there. You know, certain steps against uh, 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 your peer review has uh, other people uh, look at the case. You have uh, almost like a, a jury. When look at peer review. Your peers review it. Did you really violate that? And you know, uh, and you gotta be careful. Sometimes with the union, uh, it's kind of hard to have a peer review because you're paying union dues to protect you. But you may have a peer review board. Uh, it could be of managers, or it could be of uh, uh, union workers, or uh, hourly workers, depending on the organization, depending on the relationship, and depending on the collective bargaining agreement you have with your uh, unions or with your uh, associations. Uh, it's just another. Uh, maybe not as strict as a union, but another way of uh, employees uh, that basically have a representation within an organization that is in the management uh, functionality. And this helps it so, you know, you want to know where employees are at and you want the employees to feel they have a, a rebuttal process, for lack of better words, if you, the organization, doing something wrong. Okay, in the mediation, you bring a non-binding neutral party from the outside. Here's the case. Uh, tries to help people in a conflict, tries to come up with a, uh, uh, without a, uh, with a settlement. An arbitrator, he or she comes in there, you pick an arbitrator, I pick an arbitrator, and there's another arbitrator board that selects which arbitrator out of three or four, and they come up with one. When an arbitrator rules, it is binding. It's just like a court says, this is it. The mediator, look at a mediator as a, uh, a marriage counselor, trying to bring two people together, I'm not going to divorce, no legal. Let's see if we can work out differences. It's a lot of times just a poor communication. When an arbitrator comes in, it's like a divorce law uh, judge, he or she's looking at the cases, which one do I give this, who does this, who, uh, uh, whose case is more credible, and they make that determination. And they basically look at the facts. So you have to have a good paper. If you're, it goes to arbitration, you have to have a written policy. That's what's going to protect uh, the organization. And it's also uh, good for the employees because they know exactly what step uh, has to happen. Okay, EPA, if I look at employees' assistance, and those are outside referral service employees can use for emotional problems, uh, uh, substance abuse, uh, to seek a professional treatment. Many EPAs are fully integrated into employees' overall health benefits. If I look at the EPA, I can't force them to go to the EPA unless they get drinking on the job and that's part of the requirement for that, you know, they got caught and I say, hey, uh, you're going to go through uh, drug testing, you're going to go through uh, AAA, alcohol, uh, uh, anonymous, try to rehabilitate you, I'll give you one more shot and you have to go to the program. But if you're drinking off the job or doing some kind of uh, uh, abuse that doesn't affect the work, I have very little control uh, on that. I could recommend and I, uh, part of the benefits will be to show you uh, how to get help uh, uh, privately. Again, 
Privacy is the biggest thing in HR. You cannot tell other individuals, not even the manager of that person, if she comes or he comes to you, it's between you and HR. If I got a drug problem and my manager doesn't know it, you're not gonna say, hey, George, you know that George got a drug problem. You know what I mean? And the manager says, well, I didn't know that. I told you I gotta keep an eye on him. That's not just between you and HR and you, are, you know, cause it's not affecting the work. He's coming to you for help or you got kids that got drug problems or something else and you just give them a referral. Uh, where to go to because they have no one else to go to. You spend a lot of time at work and that's how you build uh, a morale and a lot of employees say, hey, that company did me well when um, uh, things were bad to help me out. Okay, related to uh, performance issue, dispute between worker, people at work, employees involved in drug and uh, alcohol. Okay? Now, all right, so now outplacement counseling and uh, definitions are these are professionals try to help Dismiss uh, employees manage the transition from one job to the other. It's not when I fire someone, I give them out uh, a placement uh, prof uh, uh, professional. I have a layoff. I have a job. Re I have a job. Uh, a company restructuring, and they just didn't fit into the new culture or the skill sets. For it, it doesn't mean that they uh, they're good employees. So I want to help them out. You know I mean, because I say, hey, they're good employees. They did well with me. They work. It's just they don't have the talents, or they don't want to learn the new skills. And now let's see if we could find someone else that will. Uh, uh, utilize this uh, quality employee because uh, that organization is at that point in time we're already moving forward uh, or, or we're not uh, no longer doing that product or and we don't need that type of a service okay and the goal of our placements is to help former employees address uh, phys uh, physiological issues associated with losing a job. Remember, we are so tied into our job. When I left one company, another company, it's like you lose part of you because people say, hey, where did you work at? I worked for Combat. Where did you work for? I worked for AT&T. Where did you work for? I worked for NICOR. Where did you work for? I worked for IBM. Where did you work for? I worked for this school. I worked for Harvard College. I worked for College of Lake County. I worked for uh, DePaul. It doesn't make a difference. We're associated. I work for Wendy's. I work for McDonald's. We're associated to that job. People know us just George from this company, George. Now we lose it. We lose that identity. It's almost like a divorce. And it could be not because of anything I did. It just so happened, okay? And then uh, the employee, you know, feel angry, confused about what to do next. Person feels that there's nothing to lose, nowhere else to turn, potential for violence, uh, you know, a lawsuit, one reason to provide outplacement for counseling. You know, also, you let them off, you want to help the individual. You know, job withdrawal definition. When I look at job, the employee to become dissatisfied with a job. After a while, the job, some employees, like as myself, I like to be motivated. And motivation is once I understand the task and achieve the task, I'm not motivated anymore. So motivation is uh, a strong point. You know, it sets behaviors, try to avoid uh, work uh, situations, uh, physically, mentally, or, or emotionally. You know, dissatisfied. So just try, you know, I don't like to do this. I try to avoid it. I become sick. I start having absenteeism. So you have to find out, you know, personal disposition, negative effective, core evaluations, task and role. You know, ambiguity, I don't understand my role, I don't understand how I fit in the organization, overload, I get too much to do, I can't handle it, I'm not a good multitasker, uh, supervisor, co-workers, negative behavior by management, all this would bring me back. It's like, I don't want to deal with all this, I'm going to close into my closet, I'm going to close my eyes, I'm just going to be left alone, but I'm not doing work, I don't. I just keep on putting off because it's becoming too much of a chore, it's no longer an enjoyment. Those are cases where you either help the employee leave or that employee should go on its own, okay? And then the process, you know, uh, uh, we'll go on there. All right, so now I'll say job satisfaction, definition, I love my job, it fulfills my job. If I have good job satisfaction, here I'm withdrawing, sometimes I may just need to change another job. And then the process, you know, I, I got a whole new life, a new uh, 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 purpose, a new uh, uh, destiny, okay? And the three components of that, values, perceptions, ideas, what's important. Remember that the, you have to understand your employees. Understand this, and HR will understand why. Why do you want to leave your job? I, I don't feel like I'm uh, contributing. HR has to be familiar with all of the different jobs and how that job affects other parts of the job, how that job affects customers, how that job affects other employees, how that job affects uh, uh, the outside external environment. Okay. How to improve job satisfaction by organization, and a lot of times you could do by clear uh, uh, and appropriate roles, hiring. Uh, people are predisposed to being satisfied. There's some individuals, like uh, I'll use call centers for example. That's a hard job. Just a person who could take rejection over and over again. 
Not everyone can handle a call center. You can tell by their personality. Well, yes, no, okay, yes, no. But they're still cheerful for the next call. Every call is a new call to them. They're looking at every phone call is an opportunity. Where I'm looking at, after a while, if you, some people, not another rejection, not a rejection. They're looking at, I'm going to make this big sale. Okay, uh, reinforcing the values, encouraging social support, uh, helping employees pursue their goals, setting satisfactory pay levels, communicating pay structures. That's everything the organization can do through uh, policy. You know, if I'm looking at role analysis technique, members of role set right expectations, you know, members discuss expectation. All this is looking when you're doing it to team building or collaborative uh, learning or collaborative working. We got to work together. What's the behavior? What don't I like about this behavior? Why is this department doing this? Why not? Bring them together. Let's try to hash this out. Even though it's costly, once you get all the major irritants under control, then you could only work in a little minor of it, so you don't have to have the, the, the massive meetings all the time. You could resolve it, or you could have a representative for each department, and then have it as a smaller group, not everyone yelling and shouting. Okay, and then the next one, if I look at supervisors, you know, uh, uh, these two groups affect the job, satisfied because people share the same values. If uh, I could relate to my supervisor, not only that, the, you know, the legal and the reward. But I respect him or her, and they have values that I have. Okay, uh, attitudes and philosophies provide social support. Are sympathetic and caring. Are sympathetic and caring. These two I put twice. I did it by error. But now that I look at it, it makes sense. You need an individual or manager that can listen to you and that they care. They don't have to give the uh, the, the store away or, or the or the process away, but they, you just need an error, and they'll give you somebody to bounce off information, uh, you know, either personal. I try to avoid the personal issues because I'm not a social worker, but anything at work that I have some effect where I can help other people at work because that's when I'm dealing with them, I will do that. If it's more of a personal issue, then we go to the employee uh, ass uh, assistance, you know, uh, employee assistance program. So it should be the other way, EAP, okay? Okay, purpose is meeting department, and we talked about the exit interviews and the findings, you know, why uh, uh, employees leave, several exiting employees. If you see a theme, how can I resolve that, uh, what, what can I do? And this indicates a need for change and helps in retaining present employees. That's it. We had another session, and this one here, I think this is important. HR is a very important uh, process. Remember, uh, whether you're going to HR or whether you are a uh, a, a, a manager, you have to understand the individual. It, in a nutshell, it, it helps uh, minimize the turnover. It uh, allows me to uh, plan for employee separations. It uh, shows me the legal aspects to make sure uh, they separate. If I'm uh, separating involuntary, that I still treat them with respect and with the full uh, uh, law and uh, requirements. Uh, progressive discipline, you know, you don't jump, you know, just because you did something wrong, I didn't know it was wrong. You slowly see if he, keeps, he or she keeps on creating the same uh, infractions, and at that time, the penalty gets higher and higher. You get one speeding ticket, no problem. You get another speeding ticket, the judge gives you a harder. Third speeding ticket, what happens? They take your license away. Uh, or to put you in supervision, so it's a progressive uh, uh, discipline. And an alternative uh, dispute, you know, you talk about mediators, uh, peer reviews, uh, there's other ones. These are just real quick, general ones. Remember that HR, you're always involved in all the meetings. Some people say uh, uh, HR has to know all the disciplines, has to be able to understand managers, people, the cultures, because they're the one hiring, they're the ones that are looking at where uh, we need development, uh, you know, and then the employee assistance program. Remember, you, you have that, and then the outplacement counseling, uh, uh, job withdrawal, job satisfaction. Uh, all this helps you and helps retain employees and how to improve it. And then, as, uh, and how do I find out a lot of stuff if it's working? You look at the exit, uh, uh, this one here, exit interview, and see if there's a pattern why employees are leaving. Okay? My name is Dr. George Machaki, and this is an HR perspective on separating and retraining or retain, I'm sorry, training, retaining uh, employees by Dr. George Machaki. Until we uh, meet for the next section. Bye.